Hi, so in this short video, I'm going to do a few examples of how to use the online calculator called Class Calc to solve some problems in statistics. A uh, basic one, so this is a calculator you can download or use online. If you visit classcalc.com, you can download the, the app that they have. I'm going to show you what the website shows like. It looks like this. So this is their website, and you can see in the bottom it has... Um, a link to download from the app for an Apple f device for Android or also for a Chromebook. You can also do it online here. This is the interface, what it looks like if you do it. It's very similar to Desmos. Uh, I'm going to use the app in my iPad so uh, you can look a little bit different than the screen that you saw. Uh, you can log in, if you saw, you can log in and create an account that will allow you to save your work. It might be useful to if you get stuck in work and you find exactly some buttons and stuff, you can save the commands in, a, in the line. So I'm going to start with this problem, uh, binomial distribution. So this is a, a problem, it's a typical binomial distribution problem. 8% uh, of Americans are afraid of being alone in a house at night. There's a sample of 20 Americans find a probability that there are exactly five. So this would be, I want to find, it's a binomial distribution of a binomial PDF, it's called sometimes, uh, with n equals 20, I'm doing 20. The probability of success is a 0, 08, so 0, 08. And the probability of um, failure would be 92, but I'm not going to need it. But in case, if you use a formula for the binomial, it's not hard, right? The, binom the, the formula for binomial would be uh, ncr p to the n q to the um, sorry, p to the x, uh, q to the n minus x. And here, x would be my 5, how many people I'm trying to find. So if you type this in the calculator, of course you can find it, but there's also a binomial PDF button that you can use. So I'm going to show you directly that one. So this is what the app looks like in here. So to access the binomial PDF for all the commands and statistics, in the top right, there's something that says switch calculator. You have to be sure that you're using the graphing calculator. We're not going to graph anything, but this is the only version that has the commands that we want. So then you go at this level where it says statistics. See it highlighted there. And now here, I'm not in the basic. I'm going to go to the distribution plots. If you go here, sorry, distributions button here, menu. Okay, and now here, um, uh, right here under distribution, that menu says binomial distribution. So click on that. You can just type directly binomial dist if you remember what the command name is. If you see here, uh, it's asking me uh, for two inputs. These um, entries that you see here, the n and the p, all you need to type there is the n, in this case it's 20, and the p, the probability for success is 0 0.08. And now there's two options. Are you asking for a CDF or a PDF? I'm going to put the PDF. The CDF would be the cumulative. I'm not doing the cumulative right now, just the probability distribution function. And then it asks you uh, for what value. So here, if you see it, it put a zero by default. But I want to find exactly five. So type there and put a five. And that would be the 0 0.0145. So my answer would be uh, 0 0.0145 if I use four decimal points. It would be the same result if you want to check that if I would have done the NCR, if I go here, the NCR of uh, 20, choose 5, and I multiply by uh, 0.08, or I put a quantification symbol, uh, 0.08 to the power of 5. I want to find the power button. You can go like that and edit the number of the power. And then type um, times 0.92 to the power of 15. Right. So that's exactly the same thing if I use the formula. So a little bit of a shortcut if you use the button PDF button. OK, I'm not going to do the both ways anymore. Next problem. Next problem is going to use uh, the normal distribution directly to find the area under a normal curve. So this problem says uh, full-time PhD students receive an average of $12,000 uh, 
uh, per year. Those are, it could be scholarship, it could be your TA pay. The average salaries are normally distributed with a standard deviation of 1,500. If a random PhD student is selected, find the probability that the student makes more than 15,000. So this is a normal distribution. I'm going to find um, normal CDF of between 15,000 and a big number. So I'm trying to type this as if a calculator, but I'm not going to do that anymore. How do you do that here? Well, here, I'm going to erase this. Go back to stat. Go again to dist uh, distributions. And then the normal, the first one in the top left and the bottom left corner says normal distribution. So I hope you saw that. So it's right here when I press stat distributions. It's right here. Can't put the cursor on top of it. And then ask for two things, the mu and the sigma. So the mu is the mean. So the average of my problem is 12,000. So I need to go back to a... Uh, Go back to my normal keyboard. It's 12,837. Standard deviation is 1,500. And I want to, here I do want the CDF, right? I want the cumulative. And it tells me, it opens this line here. Oh, by the way, I think if you click on this button right here, this little like um, glass, it will show you the graph. That it will center the graph around where you're doing. It's not important, but if you want to see the graph. So down here, it's asking me um, two values of x. And if you leave it blank, it will interpret it as infinity. So it's blank right now. So infinity on the left and infinity on the right. So negative infinity on the left. So I wanted to make more than 15,000. That means I put 15,000 on my left side. And I leave it empty on the right side. And see how my graph changed. And it's only graphing the area to the left of 15,000. So that, that area is um, 0.074. And that would be my answer. 0746. If I round 0747. My second question says that what's the probability the student makes between 13,000 and 1400? So the cool thing here is that you can do it in one step. Of course, I can do 13,000 on the left bound and 14,000 on the right bound. So the one thing that's the band we're asking us to find, and the probability is 0. 2377. So I'm rounding always to four decimals in my answers. So I use it the fifth decimal to see if I round up or down my fourth decimal. Okay, next example is units the inverse normal. So this one says for a medical study, a researcher wishes to select, oops, great, tap anywhere to collect it. <laughs> my, my, my app crashed on the fly, but it worked back on it. Let me close it. Okay, for a medical study, your researcher wishes to select a point in the middle 70% is a typical problem also. So I want something like this. I want to find the middle 70% under a normal curve that has mean 120 and standard deviation of 8. So this means that the inflection point here is at 128, just to have an idea of the scale. So I want to find these two cutoff scores. So if... Um, if you have to do it step by step, you have to find the Z scores that correspond to these values, and you need to find, in any case, you need to find, uh, think of it this way, there's 70% of the data inside, that means there's 30% between these two tails, right? That means that there's 15% on each tail. So you either, you either do the inverse normal of 15, and you will get this value, and the inverse normal of 85 would give you this value. So this is A and this is B. A is the inverse uh, normal, I'm going to write inverse normal of 0 0.15, and B is the inverse normal of 0 0.85. Why? Again, because I want to find the middle 70%, that leaves 30% outside. It's 15 on each tail, and the uh, inverse normal always gives you areas to the left. So in the, in the class cal calculator that we're using, how do you get to that point? Well, I go to switch calc and go to graphing. We did crash, I had, to do, I had to do it again. And then here I go to stat. And there is no button for the uh, 
for the inverse normal, you have to press the normal distribution button as before. You have to write it. This is the normal distribution with mean 120. You can read from the problem. Standard deviation 8. But instead of uh, uh, putting the CDF or PDF, I'm going to close the parentheses and now go back to the stat button, uh, distribution plot. And then it says, uh, here it says inverse CDF. The first one right there says inverse CDF. So you attach that to your function. And now I'm thinking about the normal distribution with mean 120, standard deviation 8. And uh, the, the inverse CDF attached to it means I'm going to treat the inverse function. And I find the inverse of 0.15. So this number right here, my A that I found here. Um, let me move this to the side. My A is um, 111.7. Oh, I'm going to use two decimals here, 71. And to find my inverse number for the other one, I just change this for an 85. And it's 128.29. Okay. Okay. Uh, one more example. Sample means two more examples. So sample means uh, it's the same as normal CDF, only that now I'm going to sample 35 vehicles. So if you remember now, the standard deviation that I should be using here should be the standard deviation of the population divided by the sample size. Um, the sample size in this case is 35. So I should be using here uh, standard deviation is 16 divided by the root of 35. But I don't need to worry about that. I would just treat it as I need to find a, the area, if you look at this carefully, so I'm rushing through to 90 and 96. So I don't need the inverse here. I just need to put normal distribution of um, a normal curve that has, I'm thinking it all in months. So it has to be 96 months, um, standard deviation, I can type here directly the 16 and leave it indicated like divided by the square root of 35. That will have to give me less uh, rounding errors. Okay, and now I want the CDF. So, and I want between 90 and 96. So it would be uh, 0 0.4867. So this is different than before because we're getting a sample of size 35. So it's a, it's a, it's the distribution of a sample means. So this distribution of sample means does not follow the same distribution as the population. It follows a normal distribution with the same mean, but the standard deviation is smaller. It's the standard deviation of the of the population divided by the root of the sample of just the root of the sample size. Okay, and my last example is going to be a confidence interval um, for a group of 30 men that took a stress situation. They took a number of heartbeats and it was 126. That's their sample mean. Uh, standard deviation was 4. This means it's, a, it's the sample standard deviation. But the population follows a normal distribution. And I have a size 30, so we can still use the Z distribution on this one. Um, if you use the T distribution, it probably would not change much. We can do both in a minute. So I need to find a confidence interval. Uh, in some questions, I might ask you to find the margin of error, to find uh, the critical values. Uh, if you just need to find the, the confidence interval, this calculator can do it directly in one step. So where is that? We were already there against that. And now instead of distributions, go all the way to the right, it says test press test, you get these. The first column says Z test, two sample Z test, Z interval. So I'm going to press the Z interval. It asks you for four things. The standard deviation, the sample mean, the N, and the confidence level. So the Z interval with a sigma here was, now here is a little bit weird. I had a standard deviation of the sample was four, but because the sample is at least sturdy, I can use this one as approximation of the population standard deviation. So I'm going to use that as my st population standard deviation. 
If not, we'll be using the T. And we'll do it in the T in a minute and see that it's not that different. Uh, the X hat is, my mean was 126, I believe here, yeah. So 126. My sample size is 30. And my confidence level is 90, so I need to put 0.9. So there you go, in one step, it gave me the, the confidence interval. It is uh, 124.7. Um, nine. I'm going to use. Uh, I was using four decimals, so I'm going to use two decimals here because it's hard beats. So one twenty four seven nine. So if I use the next one, it will bound to eighty, right? And then the upper bound would be one twenty seven point two zero. That would be my confidence interval. Notice that what it gave us here, that's the margin of error. So that's the distance between the 126 and these two bounds. Now I'm gonna change this for T and just to find if it's different. So if I don't go here, if I did the T test, it's the second column, so it's the T interval. And now it asks me first, notice that the, 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 the order changed. Now it asks me first for the sample mean, and that was 126. Then for the sample standard deviation, that was a four. Confidence level still 30, this still 0.9. So see how it didn't, ch it didn't change by much? In 124.75, that would round to 124.76, and the right side becomes 127.24. Okay, so the third, the second decimal changes, but the first one is basically the same if you use one decimal. So at 30 is when you can use probably uh, one or the other. Um, some books allow you to do both. Sometimes uh, they yeah, want you to use one. Okay, so these are a lot of examples to do in one video, but I want to put them all together.